is unbelievable. You can't do this stuff. For the win. He it. Now, fire up the crowd. Hello, everybody. I'm Tim Brando, and welcome to Autotrader.com College Football Today. Coming up next, the game of the century. Number one, LSU. Number two, Alabama. I'm joined by Spencer Tillman and Tony Barnhart. And you know, fellas, this matchup will likely hinge on how these teams take advantage of their scoring opportunities. Here's a look at how they perform in the red zone, presented by Verizon. Spencer, you wrote the book. Start us off with LSU. LSU scoring touchdowns 79% of the time, gentlemen. 80 is perfection defensively. Boy, real estate, tough to come by. Right, here's an amazing set for Alabama guys. Opponents only nine trips in Inside the red zone, only two rushing touchdowns. Wow. All right, I'm cutting right to the chase. Who's winning this game? Both of you. I need it now. Alabama's <laughs> at home. They're resourceful. Alabama wins 17-13. Well, LSU, because of five elite running backs, they're going to need every one of them to win this game, and they will. And I concur with Mr. Tillman. Here's what each coach admires about his opponent in the power of team presented by Russell Athletic. They're really running the ball extremely well. They've been able to, to win on the line of scrimmage with their offensive line. They have really good backs. And then they got capable skill guys and good quarterbacks who can make plays down the field. They're a very talented team. Uh, that the things that they do well, they do extremely well. And that uh, uh, it'll be a great uh, challenge for us and, and one that we're looking forward to. All right, the time for talk is over. It's game time for number one, LSU, and number two, Alabama. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, and Tracy Wilson are standing by right now. Take it away, Vern. Tim, thank you. Nighttime in Tuscaloosa, Brian Denny Stadium. It is filled to the brim. The home team, the Alabama Crimson Tide, undefeated. Ranked number two in the country. The visitors from Baton Rouge, likewise undefeated, ranked number one, the Tigers of LSU. There's just a little bit of energy going on here in Alabama. Good evening, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist, along with Gary Danielson and Tracy Wolfson. Those of us who love this sport live for nights like this. One versus two in regular season. And because these matchups happen only sporadically, the best of them evoke memories that become indelible. For example, 1969. Remember the big shootout? Texas, Arkansas. Longhorns won. 71, perhaps the best game of all. Nebraska, Johnny Rogers, they defeat Oklahoma. Here's the first of wide right. And this is Charlie Ward's last attempt as Notre Dame pulls off that win. And only five years ago, 2006, Ohio State's victory results in a sea of red in Ohio State. We might have something like that tonight. Uh, Gary, on a night like this, stars are supposed to shine. We've got a galaxy from which to choose. We sure do, Vern. There's stars all over this football field. But I didn't, and asked if there's got to be just one, who would I pick? I think it's going to be Trent Richardson. He's capable of carrying a football team. He's earned this mantle as top dog in this football game three years now. Remember, he didn't play last year. He's going to be hungry. But if he had to pick one guy that can carry the game, I think this guy right here could do it. But remember this, Vern. There's about four of them for LSU that don't want that to happen. Well, we've had two weeks to dissect and, uh, and take down everything about this game, ultimately, as we get ready for kickoff. We're talking about defenses, the two best in the country. I think you have to start there. What separates these teams from everybody else is so many great defensive football players, and they're big and they're fast. And the guys I'd like to point out are the defensive ends and outside linebackers because they're going to make an impact. Arkevius Mingo can. Alabama block him. He's so fast. Sam Montgomery, he didn't play in this game last year. Many teams wish they had one guy like this. Alabama has two also. Dante Hightower, both a linebacker and a defensive end in nickel, and then Courtney Upshaw. Those four guys will be a nightmare for these two teams. They might want to run the ball all game, but I think they're going to have to pass. You know, and that leads us to your favorite topic, of course, the guys who do the passing. If it's in the fourth quarter, it might come down to the quarterback. And you know it's going to come there. No matter how well they run it, how much defense, we've seen through history that quarterbacks are going to have to be the difference in this game. Now, last year, everybody thought Jordan Jefferson 
and Jared Lee might be a liability. It wasn't that case. Jefferson came in with a 75-yard touchdown pass, two-point conversion, and how about Jared Lee? One big pass to ice the game. But for Alabama, this year's question mark might be A.J. McCarron. He has not played in a game of this magnitude. He's cool. He's extremely talented. Let's see if he can make the plays with the game on the line. First time both teams one and two have met with an open week in 40 years. LSU and Alabama next. We said that we would lay it on the line every night. This day's about dominating an opponent. This day is about being an LSU. It's your time. It's 18. You are responsible for the outcome of this game. We play dominant football tonight. Why? Because we came here to do so. It's got to be done that way from the start to the finish. To the finish. Let's go play for victory. That's what we do. You gotta go get it and go out. And every guy in here's gonna do it, but whatever your role is, every play in the game for 60 minutes, you got it. More than a hundred thousand gathered as nighttime has descended upon Tuscaloosa and first on the field, the Crimson Tide. The top team in the land, the Tigers of LSU. Let's go down live to Tracy, who's with Nick Saban. Thanks, Vern. Coach, you said all week your concern was the hype. What did you say to your team to make sure they maintain their focus? Well, you know, I think you got to focus on the little things, like I've been always saying. Look at the right stuff, focus on the ball, see ball, hit ball. You know, I mean, and you can't get too over anxious about what you're doing. You just got to go do what you got to do to focus on playing your best football as a football player. Just look around. This place is electric. It's going to be louder than it's ever been. How can that help your team tonight? Well, I don't think there's any question that the, the passion and energy of the fans are going to help our team. And hopefully they'll do a good job of creating some noise when they're on offense. Thanks a lot. Good luck. Vern. All right, Tracy, thank you. SEC on CBS tonight from Tuscaloosa. Bryant Denny Stadium, 101,000 on there. It is the Home Depot SEC on CBS. The Tigers of LSU against the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Moments ago, Tracy with Les Miles. Coach, you told me yesterday that in games like this, it's going to be a 60 minute war. How have you prepared your team for this challenge? Well, we recognize who we're playing. We, uh, we understand intensity starts with the first snap and ends with the last snap and all in between. So it's just everything you got, every guy, start to finish. In big games like this, you've shown us some trickery. Do you have anything under that hat tonight? I, I got a great team that's playing on the road and looking forward to victory. Thanks a lot. See ya. Burn? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is the SEC West standings. Alabama LSU both 5 and 0 Arkansas playing South Carolina tonight. So 
the lead in the SEC West is on the line. Alabama won the toss. They've opted to receive. James Hairston, wearing number 30, will kick off. And Mark Fleas Mays, who's long this year, is a return of 70 yards, is back with Darius Hanks. At long last, the kickoff. And it's Mark Lee's Mays. Nice open. LSU has been making statements when their kickoff coverage unit. They almost intimidated Auburn right off the field. I know they intimidated me, but look what Alabama does. They win the toss and they say, bring it on. We'll face it. A redshirt sophomore is Mays limping just a little bit. And McCarron opens at quarterback. That's Chris Underwood is back up tight end. Richardson going left. Gets around the corner. And picks up a quick 15 on the first carry. And it was Underwood, number 87, who led the way. One of the things Alabama loves to do is get to the edge with their H-backs. Watch Brad Smelly all night number 17 because of short shifts and motions. They seem to gain advantages almost like an unbalanced line right before the snap. It worked to perfection right there. Give 18, uh, give an 18 yard gain to Richardson on the opening carry. Out of the shotgun, quick flip left side wide open. It's Richardson who lined up wide left. A, Eric Reed made the stop. A total busted assignment for LSU. No one reduced out. No one took Trent Richardson. Now this ball came out right here. But three big plays and something Nick likes to do early in a game, Burn, is get his quarterback a couple of easy throws. Well, when there's no one out defending, it makes it easy. easier. Easy. Yes. Gain of 22. Richardson left side this time great penetration up in the line. I think that was Sam Montgomery who was the first one through and let's uh, introduce you to the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. We began with the red shirt sophomore A.J. McCarron who won this uh, job uh, over Philip Sims back in, it's in the summer. Probably the one thing you could say the most pressure he was on is spring football winning the job. Nick Saban and Jim McElwain his coordinator put him through a tough job even to win it. Lost five in the last play. Play is second and 15. It was a great job by Sam Montgomery on the last stop. Right? right side. That's Brad Smelly the H back. And let's set the offense as Tyron Matthew makes the tackle. Barrett Jones, the All-American at left tackle. Warmack, Blayhoss, McCullough, D. Fluker, they might try to attack him. Well, D.J. Fluker did not play in this game last year. McCullough actually started at right tackle. There's Fluker, D.J. Fluker, sophomore out of Foley, Alabama. Third down. McCarron with a lot of time. And he settles for Richardson as a safety valve. And a nice defensive effort then by LSU. Ryan Baker, number 22, with the stop. Well, LSU has a great secondary. This time, A.J. Sat and looked. Fluker did his job against Mingo, but no one opened downfield. Nothing down there. Well, they used two field goal kickers for Alabama. Kate Foster is the long distance kicker. He's one of three for the year, and this one's from 44. Remember the last two years, total points in the first quarter, three points by LSU last year. Foster. S still stands. Wide right. So a positive opening three plays. Results in exasperation. 
as Foster. It was wide right all the way. Richardson had to football and a good run and on this pass, but Eric Reed served notice that I'll take you on anytime. LG, as a proud NCAA corporate partner, presents great SEC rivalries. Roll time! Uh -huh. Reverse. Here comes the left side. D'Angelo Peterson. In the side. Yeah! Roll tight, roll tight. Roll tight, roll tight. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, the approach to uh, Bryant Denny down University Boulevard here, one of the great drives in college football. Oh. Alabama leads the series. LSU 8 and 10 here. And now the Chick-fil-A starting lineups and in at quarterback, the redshirt senior. 8-0 this year. He's thrown only one interception from Brenham, Texas, Jarrett Lee. Vern, I think he came, stayed at LSU this year, even though he didn't think he'd play, because of what happened his freshman year against Alabama when he threw four interceptions. He's got a chance to redeem himself tonight. J.C. Copeland opens at fullback. He'll alternate that with Stampley. Russell Shepard in motion. And they'll hand it off to Spencer Ware. And he follows Copeland's block. Out to the 30, perhaps the 31. Robert Lester with the tackle. Let's introduce you to the remainder of the LSU offense up front. Blackwell gets the start at left guard. Hebert at center and Williford at right guard. P.J. Lonergan is out. He is... Uh, able to come back tonight. He's missed a couple. Stampley will rotate that fullback spot. Ware is back after the one game suspension. There is Les Miles. So now it is Copeland still in. He's a load 280 pounds. Randall sets up tight right. Flip left side. Man is wide open. That's Odell Beckham number 33. The true Freshman defensively for Alabama as LSU hurries up to the line of scrimmage. Williams, Chapman, Damian Square, the linebackers. Jarrell Harris, Hightower, Nico Johnson, Courtney Upshaw, and the secondary just outstanding. Menzi, Lester, the All-American, Mark Barron, and Dre Kirkpatrick in the corner. Gain of 13, first down 10. Lee, Randall at the 50-yard line. And Daquan Menzi, number 24, is the defender. Well, we have talked uh, about the quality of these two de defenses, Gary. They're, they're mirror-like images of each other. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you can close your eyes, grab a stat, and know you're going to be impressed with these two defenses. Second down. And four. Where? Left side. Copeland helped him with a block. And he's around the corner for what appears to be another first and ten for LSU. Burn up. If there's one group of really motivated players on this football field, I think it's the running backs and fullbacks for LSU. They're sick of everyone talking about Trent Richardson. They feel they can run the ball as tough as he can, especially Spencer Ware and those two fullbacks. I think as a group, yes, Trent might get the nod as an individual, but as a group, there's no back seat for LSU's running backs. Well, it is a quartet. They'll use four and perhaps five running backs before the game is complete. And they brought the chain all the way from across yeah. the far side. They'll use eight or nine defensive linemen five running backs two fullbacks two quarterbacks four different tight ends this is a very very deep team and we're going to see jordan jefferson already this is earlier than i've seen in any game this is they want jefferson in here because of what he did last year 
Jefferson, if you don't know the story somehow, was the starter for the last two years, suspended for the first four games of this season because of his involvement in a parking lot fight outside of a bar after hours. He was reinstated in game five, and he has rotated with Jared Lee at the quarterback position. He gives them the running threat at that position. They and don't already, have Alabama has lost Jesse Williams, their big run nose tackle in this football game. They're down one big guy. Left guard, Jefferson. They try to pull the ball out. But he picked up the first down and 10. Now let's see if he stays in there. And apparently he will not. So Jarrett Lee's back on. Let's go down to Tracy Wolfson. Well, thanks, Vern. They're looking right now at Jesse Williams' right arm, and it looks like he's losing some feeling in those fingers. They're taking a look at it. No further word. They're also looking at Smelly's left shoulder, so keep an eye on that one as well. There's Brad Smelly. First down and 10, two wide right. Jarrett Lee calls timeout. We played five and 45 here in the first. And we're still scoreless. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by New York Life Insurance Company. Nissan. AT&T. And by Sonic. NFL on CBS tomorrow. The score here, zip, zip. And here's our lineup tomorrow. The Jets at Buffalo, Cleveland at Houston, Miami at Kansas City in the early game, Denver at Oakland, and Cincinnati at Tennessee. It all begins with JB and the quartet tomorrow, 12 noon Eastern time. The NFL Today presented by Southwest Airlines. Well, you can tell whose team has an open week. Bob Kraft, chairman and CEO. They've got the Giants. I'm sorry. See, I'm just tuned into this network. <laughs> Jesse Williams, by the way, good news for Alabama fans, is back on the field. Lee overthrows his receiver, Randall. I, I really like the way both offenses gotten off in this game so far. Last year, both offenses, first series, were three and outs. Both drives. Alabama had a decent drive, missed a field goal, and you see LSU answering with a nice drive of their own already now. Six plays in this drive, and they've run three and passed three. Good balance. Cadron Boone, number 86, is split out wide to the right. That's Jarvis Landry, a freshman, number 80. And a pop from Dequan Menzi on Spencer Ware. Well, we talked about four running backs for LSU. Spencer Ware is their most violent. He's the go-to guy, but we'll see Michael Ford. We'll see Alfred Blue. We'll see Kenny Hilliard, who's earned time last two weeks ago against Auburn. Third down eight. Blitz corner. Deep left side. Blitz was effective. And it was Hightower, too. Hightower, six foot five. 260 pounds, a roving linebacker. And this time they bring six, does Alabama. And Jared Lee had to throw it off his back foot because if he stepped into that one, he would have stepped into number 30. And Kirby says, just the way we want it. Dante Hightower, Hightower probably off his best uh, effort the last game against Tennessee. He was all over the place. Here's Brad Wing. The Australian punter who has had a great season with efforts like that. Brad Wing has a net punt average of 41.1.
Trent Richardson back on the field when we come back. Scoreless midway through the first quarter, 8-17, and we get to introduce you to the LSU defense. Adams, Brockers, Logan, and Sam Montgomery up front. Francois Minter, Ryan Baker are the defenders. Claiborne, Taylor, Eric Reed, and Tyron Matthew, who's back himself after that one-game suspension. And there's the chief, John Chavis, third year as the coordinator here with LSU having come over from Tennessee. And he's retooled this defense in his short time. He says we look for cover corners that can play man to man and then we want speed rushers will load the box and dare you to throw. That's why Tyron Matthew and Morris Claiborne are so important to this defense. From the five second possession first down and ten it's Richardson in the backfield. And it's Richardson who gets the handoff and there is that tough defense of LSU led by Sam Montgomery. Well if there's a human highlight film on defensive football players Ty Matthew has been doing it. He's got great instincts. He just seems to be able to find the ball and figure out a way to get the ball on the ground. He intercepts. He's got great hands but I think his best attribute he's just got great instincts to just play ball just understands the game now Les miles telling us he's got things you cannot coach 740 to go second down and 10 no gain on the last play play action now but Karen from the end zone incomplete intended for Marquise Mays and Brandon Taylor knocked it away. Yeah, Brandon Taylor, LSU fans will love to see him make a play because last year he was injured in this game, missed the rest of the season. I thought he had a chance to intercept this ball. He was hunting that crossing route up all the time. And you can see as the fans react, could have been called. Wasn't. And so third down and 10. Remember in the this series, the four games, both teams make a third down conversion one third of the time. From the end zone, wide open is Mays. One on one, out to the 25. Gerald Simon, the third of the three suspended players from two weeks ago made the stop. Well, Big this play. is such a nice call. Remember, they're backed up. Watch the crossing route come right in here. A.J. McCarron, the pass blocking. They bring six. I don't know what was going on in the Personal secondary. Foul. I think Harold nice Simon match. busted the assignment that time because half the team was playing man to man and half the team wasn't. It, but it was protection. Protection is what came through on that one. Horse collar or face mask, whatever it was, you grab it, you're going to get called. That's 15 yards. Well, it was called on Simon. And the additional 15 moves it out to the 40 yard line. Yeah, here's Alabama again, overloaded to the left. Richardson probing that left side. Now let's go back to the studio for this John Hancock update. Here's Tim. Vernon Gary, there is another top 10 game going on in the country, and it happens to be in the SEC. Tyler Wilson goes 68 yards to Jarius Wright to give Arkansas a 17 14 lead. Remember, the loser of your game may have to fight it out with the Hogs for a Sugar Bowl bid. Back to you. And thank you, Tim. It's uh, second down here. Little new wrinkle right there for Alabama. Quick screen off of a pivot. We were told during that uh, highlight from Brando Vern, if there's a question on the last face mask, any opening on the helmet is considered part of the face mask call. And that clearly was the case with the back of the helmet. And it's uh, a third down now. Third and one officially. Richardson 
four carries, 15 yards. Darts to the outside. Brought down with the first down at the 48. That was Eric Reed. Now you heard Tim mention the score of the Arkansas Carolina and South Carolina Georgia and South Carolina by virtue of its win earlier this year has the uh, advantage in that head to head battle. First down 10. LSU is rolling defensive linemen and they're using all eight of them or nine of them early in the game keeping them fresh. Got popped at Richardson a couple of times. First was Kevin Minter, number 46, and then Eric Reed was there to complete the play. Vern, I call them dirty runs, tough runs, but they're going left behind Barrett Jones. They're all American. He was a guard a year ago, but they've run left predominantly in this game because they're featuring their best offensive linemen. But those are those tough, gritty runs through the course of a game that add up on a defense. Eddie Lacy is back on now. At running back, he'll spell Richardson. Lacy has been battling a turf toe. Here's Barrett Jones, shifted over, yep, over to the me. right. Burn. And they'll bring Lacy, Lacy to the right side. Eddie Lacy. Well, when you got a go-to receiver, you throw the ball to him. When you got a go-to running back, you give the ball. When you got a go-to lineman, you run right at him. Unbalanced line, and Lacey, who's averaging more than eight yards a carry, gets another big one. And Burn, I watched some practice. He was slipping. He's got a bad toe, but boy, he doesn't look too much of a bad toe tonight. And a flag on the last play. And it appears we have a substitution foul on Alabama. Lacey, that turf toe suffered against Arkansas. And uh, they didn't use him much in practice Thursday. They were saving him. They gave him his big workout on Wednesday and let him rest. Barrett Jones again goes to the right side. He's basically playing a tight end now. Number 75. Marquise Mays after the penalties marked off. It's first down and 15. Leha snaps it back. Not much doing on this one. That was Lacey again, number 42. No score. As Arkansas team three times previously this year, they have had drives in excess of 90 yards. Well, this one, if you'll recall, after Brad Wing's punt, Began all the way back at the five. They, uh, the big play early was Marquise Mays. Now they've got a second down. Here's Darrell Simon right here. They like to bring him off the corner. He's a very effective blitzer. Off the slot mostly. Marquise Mays is the uh, wide man. Here's Lacey. Oh, Eric, oh Eric boy. Reed. He's a great one, Eric Reed. We talk about Mark Barron a lot. Remember these freshman defensive backs last year for LSU? They had to come through in this football game, and they did. Remember, there was injuries. Therald Simon had to play. Matthew had to play. There's Eric Reed. Eric Reed, whose father was a track star at LSU and is a member of the LSU Athletic Hall of Fame. There he is, the sophomore. Five tackles already, third down and 20. Now, interesting call because they missed the field goal here. What will Alabama do? Play action. McCarron comes right. Did he get it? No, he did not. It was Kenny Bell, number seven. And Therrell Simon was over here defending number 24. God, that ball was hanging up there forever. I thought Simon had a shot at it. Let's see. The ball is juggled too late. Great call. His right foot came out of bounds before he had control of it. Well, they bring Kate Foster on again. McCarron's on. This would be a 50-yarder. Foster one of four. He missed twice this year from 53. 
So this one from 50 for the first points of the game. Nah. Yeah. They, were, they only had 10 men on the field, Vern. Michael Williams, a tight end, did not get the call as a field goal. So that is a timeout called by Alabama. 2.24 to go in the first. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa. Tomorrow on 60 Minutes, the man who corrupted Washington, plus a look at the life of our own Andy Rooney tomorrow on 60 Minutes. It's an interesting call here for Nick. You miss a field goal, it's going to create great field positions for LSU. Do they have a gimmick pooch punt from field goal, or are they going to give him another shot at it? Foster's career long is 49. I think it's the first key decision by either coach in the game. He's one for four this year with two misses from 53. Wide right. I don't think that was deep enough either, was it? Nope. I don't think that would have made it if it was straight down the alley. If there was a tilt in this game, most people felt LSU had the advantage on special teams. Oh, you're right. Well, well, I don't think that he did not hit that ball no. well at all. Ouch. Two decent drives for Alabama. No points. The LSU defense very happy. There you see Les Miles. Lee at quarterback. Spencer Ware. Jarrell Harris, number five. You know, Vern, the better the teams, as we look at Kirby Smart right there, the defensive coordinator under Nick, the, the harder it is to predict where the pressure point will occur on the field. In this game, it could happen anywhere. And I think for both teams, it's the first game that their opponent could take advantage of wherever that pressure point pops up. Lee whips it across to no tight end no, Chase Clark. No play. They're going to wave it off. All righty. Yep. I think left tackle was leaning back. Chris Fire Falk. To the snap. False start. 76. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second out. Yeah, you remember those guys coming on a pass rush? He had Upshaw that time, and he felt Upshaw's speed on the corner, and he was leaning back. Watch him lean back right here. I got Upshaw. Oh. <laughs> I don't blame him. <laughs> Or Kirby trying to change. Remember, the crowd noise usually affects the offense, but it affects Alabama's defense because they change their defense more than anybody in college football. And out on the corner, Dre Kirkpatrick was trying to signal his teammates some kind of a change, jumping up and down and crossing his forearms. And remember the busted assignment that Alabama had last year caused a 75-yard touchdown pass in this game. Now watch Kirkpatrick top it to the left side of your screen. <laughs> See what the home crowd can affect the defensive unit. Well, they reset the game clock. And it's second down and 13. Quick flip, Russell Shepard got to, gets a block and moves it out to the 35-yard line. Jarrell Harris, number five. Yeah, you know, both time you talk about both defenses, and, and the first look you say LSU has got the faster defense. And you may be right. They are very, very fast, but they're tougher than people think. Alabama looks bigger, but they're faster than you think. Did you see Jarrell Harris make that play? Third and eight out of the spread. Lee, the quarterback. Alabama with three down. Remember, it was Dante Hightower last time. They bring four. Low snap, Lee picks it up, drills it, intercepted. That's his first interception 
since Mississippi State. Robert Lester got it. Third down defense. That's where Nick makes his money. Kirby Smart got him in the exact one. Four-man rush, five-man delayed blitz. Gosh, Jarrett Lee throws to the one guy that's double covered on the field. He misses it, misreads it, and throws it right to Alabama. For Jared Lee, that ends a streak of 100 passes. Without an interception, it is only the fourth turnover of the year. And the first turnover in five games for LSU. McCarron back deep. Left side, diving catch. Darius Hanks, number 15, inside the 35. You know, Bert, I talked about the motivated running backs for LSU. Well, the other motivated group is the receivers for Alabama. They've been dissed all year. They're tired of me talking. Gary <laughs> Danielson talking about Julio Jones. Julio Jones has been a big part of this football game. Look what he's done the last three years. But they've got six of them now that they think can go out there and make the plays, and they just did right there. And Julio is earning a paycheck in the NFL now. First down, 19-yard gain, play action. McCarron deep. He's got Hanks deep, and it's tipped away at the last minute. Morris Claiborne, number 17, terrific job of getting to the ball. Well. I believe on this field, and I don't think I've ever said this in 20 years, there are 10 defensive backs that are going to play in the NFL. There's one of them right there. Look at that coverage. Look at that athletic play. He got it with his right hand. Ball hung for a half a second and nothing. Oh, take a breath. All of us. <laughs> That's the end of the first. Zip zip, we'll return to Brian Denny after this message and a word from your local station. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. We began the second quarter. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson. And the top two teams in the country, LSU and Alabama, it's second down and 10 as the Alabama Crimson Tide with A.J. McCarron, quarterback, try to take advantage of the interception. And here is Trent Richardson rumbling. Well, we talked about defenses to start the game. Here we are, third year in a row. Total points in the first quarter. Three. You know, you know, at LSU, that's 62 possessions. That was the 62nd possession. They finally had a turnover. That's amazing. They just do not lose the ball. That was a misread by Jarrett Lee. And what happened? Second and long. Give it to number three. Where did they run it, Burn To the left. Aha. Uh -huh. And that would be where you find Warmack and Barrett Jones. To the left. Oh. Wow. Well, let's uh, revisit that Jared Lee interception. Only his second of the season. You know, it looked, was the snap low? Is that what threw him off? See, when you have to look down for the snap, and now you come up top, is Les Miles saying, you know, I need you, Jared. You know, last year you didn't play great in the first half, but I needed you at the end, and you came through. Don't give up on this thing. The, when he could never really refocus downfield, that as much as anything caused the interception. Well, we know already in the first quarter about the field goal problems for Alabama, and I wonder how this might affect what they call should they not be successful on third down. They, Kate Foster has missed two already. And Tyron Matthew, the yeah. honey badger. And we talked about him coming off the slot. Every coach I've talked to said that's when he's the best. Mingo and number seven, Matthew. Both of them were in that play, and Karen had nowhere to go with the ball. 
Third and 18. Hanks and DeAndrew White are paired to the right side. Blitz. McCarron dances right. Being chased and heaves it away. We Look. talked about those defensive ends, Vern. This is what you have to be able to do is block those guys because they're going to be in on every play. Whether it's LeVar Edwards or Sam Montgomery or Kendrick Adams, Kevius Mingo, they just keep rotating them through. They're all fast and they're all dangerous. Now they brought Jeremy Shelley on now. He is uh, acknowledged as the shorter field goal kicker. His long for the year is 37. They're going to give him a shot, apparently, from 49. McCarron will hold. Blocked. Picked up in the air. And LSU's Eric Reed hurdles a man. Special teams. Special teams. Well, I'll tell you, when you put a guy out of his range, okay, you got Shelly, the short field goal kicker, trying to do too much. He doesn't get the ball up in the air, too much push inside, and it's blocked. I did not see who got it. Hard to tell. Might have been Benny Logan. Could have been. It is Logan, 93. It's Logan with his right hand. But more than anything, it was the trajectory of the kick. They went with their short kicker, Nick. Oh, for three at field goals, LSU. This time they don't have to depend on a miss. They block it. Welcome back to Bryant Denny. Uh, a rather quiet Bryant Denny Stadium right now, stunned because of this last play. The block from Benny Logan, number 93. Eric Reed picked it off in midair. There's Logan with the block. Two missed field goals and a blocked field goal now. Well, I think this is the first time that Les now makes a big decision. Does he switch quarterbacks? Yes, he does. When you're using two quarterbacks and things aren't going well, how do you make the decisions? He's going to go to Je Jordan Jefferson. Kenny Hilliard is also in as a fullback. We saw him at tailback two weeks ago. D'Angelo Peterson tight right. There's a little toss out to Michael Ford. Now Jordan Jefferson grew up in the uh, suburban New Orleans area. And uh, he led his team to a 15 and 0 record as a high school senior was not highly recruited by LSU. It was during this game here in 07 he was making a visit and the Tiger group saw him on the Alabama sideline and within two weeks they'd offered him and he'd sign. Second down. Spencer Ware back in. that defense they continue to check as LSU checks so does the Alabama defense one of the staples of a Nick Saban defense second LSU timeout called our coverage of the Home Depot SEC will continue after this word from your local station Saturday night in Tuscaloosa no score second quarter and LSU with a second down now following the block punt and P.J. Lonergan who missed the last two full games with a bad ankle. We were told he was ready to go and he is in there now. Copeland number 44 is the fullback. Spencer Ware number oh, 11 oh, oh, oh. brings See what a I mean? load doesn't he? Those dirty tough Rubby SEC yards. <laughs> you want to play tailback in this conference, you got to run it right behind your guards, follow the fullback, and right in to those big inside linebackers. Take them on and make the play. Good defense, good offense, good tough football. Third and one. Got 
the first down, it would appear. Yes, they're going to give him a favorable spot that he earned. Jarrell Harris and Jesse Williams with the tie. It appears he got it. Yeah. If the yellow line's right. Yep, it is. Again, run the ball now. It's Will Blackwell. He's going to run it behind Chris Falk. He's become a favorite. Their left tackle for LSU also is a lower. Huge offensive line. Jarrett Lee with the interception thrown to Lester on the last possession. Option play, flag is down. Forward with a carry, but let's see about uh, the penalty. Against LSU, Tom Ritter is our referee tonight. So Nick's had a couple decisions. Yep. Les has had a big decision. Switches quarterbacks here earlier in this game when his starter's not offense, doing well. Five yard penalty, first down. You no, know, I think it's easy for Les though. He went back and watched that game from last year. I think when Jordan Jefferson came back on this team and he gave him the snaps, he had this game in mind. He saw how he did it last year, and he knew he'd need him in this game. Three wides on first and 15. Run all the way and not very far. Damian Square, number 92, with the tackle. Well, Alabama, we were told by Greg Sadrawa that he believes their front three or four take on blocks this year better than last year. Now, there's no Marcel Darius right. getting the penetration, but as a group, they refuse to let those offensive linemen get up to the linebackers. Second and 14. Jefferson wings it out right side to an exposed wide receiver Jarrell Harris with the pop on Russell Shepard. Oh boy, Mr. Quarterback. You know, you talk about the hit, but watch the perfect defense here. Two guys, nowhere to go even if he catches it. You almost triangulate that thing and put him out. That's how you want to play defense. One inside, one outside. Choose Jarell your Harris poison. Choose and your Dante poison. Hightower. <laughs> Third and 14. Full out blitz. They get the ball delivered left side to Odell Beckman, but they do not get anywhere close. To the first down lead. I have to give it to Steve Craig Thorpe and LSU. They had the perfect call on for this all out blitz. You bring everybody, it's man to man in the secondary. Don't know who's down right there. Is Dequan it, Menzi, is we're it told. Their starter. Yeah. You go man to man in the secondary, one good block could spring them. And Menzi comes in and makes the play, beat the block by D'Angelo Peterson on the play. Peterson gets that block, they have a chance. I'm just guessing that he is suddenly singing tenor. <laughs> well. Just a thought. Now here's one of the advantages of what, when Les fakes a lot of punts, it forces the defense to play safe. Right here, Alabama will play safe and just let them punt the ball. Keep their defense on the field, looking for the fake. Brad Wing, in his first year as a starting punter, the young man from Melbourne, of course, had a fake punt earlier this year, and here he is inside the five for the second time. Brad Wing, whose mom and dad have moved from Melbourne to Baton Rouge. 34 yards on the net. Ron Brooks with the catch. Alabama's got it 95 yards away.
still no score in Tuscaloosa with 8.53 to go. In the half, now it's time to take a look at our Home Depot tools for success. In the open, we talked about the defensive ends. Let's talk about the tackles, All-American. Barrett Jones, he's going to show you the power that you have to have to play offensive tackle. Watch him come off. You want to run the ball, you got to have power. But to play in this offense, in this league, DJ Fluker will show you, you have to have the protection. Watch DJ against Mingo here. This is the pass protection that allowed AJ to get the crossing route. To play offensive tackle, you got to run off the ball. You also have to protect the quarterback. Tough position. See the stat on McCarron, six of ten. And just a, a footnote on Brad Wing. Now he he played Australian rules football in Australia. That'd be a good place to play it. And uh, spent one year at Parkview Baptist High School in Baton Rouge. His dad, David, had a cup of coffee with Detroit in 1990. And Wing's mother and dad, David and Kathy, have decided to move now to Baton Rouge. In his first year as a starter, and he actually missed two games. 33 punts and only 10 have been returned. It is amazing. Um, he's got now so far 17 punts inside the 20. But on top of that, that usually shortens your average. Right. Remember, he's had one third of his punts go more than 50 yards. So far in this game, the special team kickers have been favoring by a wide margin here, LSU. Three missed field goals and two great punts. Well, the reason he's getting so much camera time right now <laughs> is we're having a little uh, malfunction with a replay system, which allows us to replay one of the memorable plays of the season. Brad Wing, 52-yard punt return out of the fake punt. That was ruled taunting and uh, correctly called according to rule. And uh, he certainly earned more than his 15 minutes of fame when he is became the first touchdown negated by the new rule in effect this year. Now we're set to go. Yeah, if it sounds quiet, the Alabama offense tried to quiet down the student section right behind it. On first down, McCarron, Eddie Lacy pulled down after a two-yard gain out near the seven. Benny Logan, number 93, made the stop. It's very quiet, isn't it? Eerily so. A lot of nervous fans here, I think. Second and seven. Richardson. That's a first down. They went with Lacey on first down. They came back on second down, put Trent in the game. He's going to run it this time to the right side. Oh, Fluker gets a great block. And you see Trent just run through one of those linebackers. You don't tackle this guy with an arm. There's no way. Hatcher had no chance of stopping Trent Richardson on that play. On first down, take the reverse and give it up the middle. Yeah, we're going to get a holding here, it looks like. That treaded umpire flag in the middle of the pile. Face mask. Hmm. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 93 defense. 15 yard penalty automatic. First foul. That's Benny Logan, the defensive tackle. Yeah, and I was guilty of anticipating a call there. Oh, you see it right there. Look at that. Right to the face mask. Logan cannot get his block because of the hand to the face mask of Womack. Good call. Alabama moves now to a first down at the 36 yard line. Marquise Mays, number four, to the right side. Mike Williams, the tight end, sets up tight right. Richardson again, boy. This LSU team is doing a fine job defending him. Let's go back and check in once again with Tim Brando.
All right, Vern and Gary, Oklahoma State's Brandon Whedon is going to be picked off by Alan Chapman, a 59-yard return, 24 unanswered points. The narrative after your game tonight will be how far will the loser fall? Well, if Oklahoma State goes down, it won't be quite as far. And look out, Boise State, too. Back to you. All right, Tim, thank you. Second down. Delay give to Richardson bounces to the outside into a tussle and Todd Jones number 58 made it well Oklahoma State undefeated and it's time for our CBS poll question which teams will go undefeated to vote log on to facebook.com SEC on CBS to vote and Make your voice heard. We'll have the results in the second half. Uh, the best pick on the board is Boise State. Mm -hmm. Although TCU's coming out a little bit, that's going to be a, a, a worthwhile win for Boise State. Like Case Keenum in Houston, huh? Yeah, that's a good one, too. McCarron, he's got Richardson wide open. Flies by Eric Reed. Breaks another tackle and is banged out of bounds at the 19-yard line. It looked like another blown coverage. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's a Heisman contender. He's the best player on the field, and nobody covers him as the receiver comes across. He didn't even have to pick anybody. There was nobody there. Nobody tried to get over the top. It was going to... The, the design on the play Oh man, this guy not only tough and strong in the open field, he doesn't go down. Ask old Miss, right? Oh my goodness, that 73 yard run. And now on first down, that 39 yard gain. Here's McCarron, goes right side. And Michael Williams, his tight end, is hit by the Honey Badger. Tyron Matthew. Well, no excuse for this. Another mental mistake, and you get this guy. Remember, he's big, he's strong, can't tackle him, and he jukes by a safety. Ty Matthews about the last guy that could make this tackle also, and he's got to do it on the big tight end, Michael Williams. Matthew, three tacklers tonight, the sophomore, and it's second down. Nothing doing on this one. But we've seen two blown coverages on Richardson yes. as a receiver tonight. On Richardson, that's true. Hard to believe. You know, one thing without Julio Jones, though, for this Alabama team is they spread the ball more to different players. You can't just zero in on Julio. Alabama has seven different players with more than 10 catches. Seven different guys, tight ends, running backs, Wide receivers you really don't know who's going to get the football. All right, here we go. Third and eight. We have seen ample demonstrations of the inadequacy of the field goal unit. Here they come. For Alabama. Here's McCarron. Man coverage too far. It's fourth down. Now what? Intended for Hanks. Now what? The kicking game tonight. Kate Foster. Kate Foster again. This was not only wide right, it was short. And they brought in Jeremy Shelley. It was blocked by Benny Logan. They're going to try it again. It's going to be Jeremy Shelley from 34 yards out for the season. He's now 11 of 14. McCarran holds it. Alabama is first on the scoreboard. Well, Nick Saban was upset about uh, what transpired on the previous play. That was the pass to Darius Hanks. I would imagine he's calmed down a little more now as Jeremy Shelley knocks it home and Alabama leads by three. Tim Brando in New York coming up with the Geico Halftime Report. Spencer Tony and I will get you caught up on all of the action, including that other top ten matchup in the SEC. Tyler Wilson hits Jarius Wright, their second connection, as the Razor Pags take advantage against South Carolina. Now back to LSU Alabama.
Thank you, Tim. Three nothing here. Three fifty three to go. As uh, the Crimson Tide finally got on the board with the successful field goal kicked by Shelley. I think we got a pretty good idea, Vern, and yes. show the audience why Nick Saban was upset. He had a little bit of a bunch pass on, and I think A.J. McCurran went the wrong way with his read. He took the easy way out to throw the fade. We'll get there shortly. Here's Cade Foster to kick off Ron Brooks and Russell Shepard are the two deep men. This will be Ron Brooks. Taken down short of the 25. Let's go back, Gary, and take a look at that play. Well, number one, Eric Reed has Brandon Gibson in the backfield. Here's Reed, and here's Gibson. Okay, that's who he's got on this play. It's a bunch route. Watch Reed get picked. Gibson's wide open for a touchdown, and A.J. goes to the easy throw. He had him wide open. Reed's right over here. No chance on the play. Went instead deep for Hanks. First down 10. Option. Jefferson pitch. Michael Ford slips a tackle and motors down the left side. He's got a first down 10 LSU. Well, look what we've got here. Another decision by Les Miles. Start thinking about this. He's going to stick with Jordan Jefferson. He feels he needs to open up this Alabama defense by making these linebackers run sideline to sideline. He's doing it with the option. He's doing it with Jordan Jefferson. LSU in the midst of his fourth possession now, or early on in its fourth. Three first downs and 52 yards of total offense. Option near side. There's the pitch. It's been successful too, hasn't it? Yeah. Les is making the correct choice here. This has an effect on these big sized linebackers for Alabama. Don't forget that. They're going to have to run sideline to sideline and chase them down. You see it a late pitch, and Barron has to make the tackle. Second down and one. Copeland in at fullback. Spencer Ware. Ooh. Nothing. That was Courtney Upshaw at the 41. Who's been very quiet in this game, hasn't yes, he? He has, yes. It's because LSU does not throw the ball as much. They've kind of learned their lesson against Alabama. You got to run the ball to be effective against Alabama. Uh, Kirby Smart makes his defensive changes on third down and one. Whoops. Is it Billingsley? Looks like it. Yes. Andre Billingsley, number 86. Defense. Number 86, five yard penalty, yardage result in a first down. Sometimes it's helpful to think back to last year. Right about this time last year, let's let Jordan Jefferson kind of get his sea legs in this game. And then he came back with him and he had a great second half. Two minutes to go here, he's going with Jefferson. And a first down 10. Keep in mind that uh, LSU had to use two timeouts. They have only one left. And D'Angelo Peterson is the man in motion, number 19. The tight end. Jefferson. Comes right, pumps once, twice, out of bounds. Oh, what a pop he took. Dre Kirkpatrick right at the out-of-bounds line. One guy I thought LSU would get the ball to in this game is D'Angelo Peterson, number 19. Watch him go down. This is four vertical. If you hold the safety to this side, he's got an easy throw. 
Mark Barron really goes to the wide side of the field. He had Peterson in a great opportunity for a big play. Second down five. Keep it on the ground. Come up the middle. Hard hit on Michael Ford, number 42, from Mark Barron, number four. <laughs> They did get the first down. Sure did. 90 seconds to go. And the clock started again as they reset the chain. Alabama, there are going to be 12 people in the huddle. That's going to be a penalty. No matter what you do, you break that huddle with 12. Substitution infraction on the offense. 12 players breaking the huddle. Five yard penalty. First down. And again, LSU with the infraction. Michael Ford was the 12th guy. Tried to hustle off, but he had been uh, identified. There's Ford. So, placed the ball outside the 40. One timeout left, 113, and the clock running, remaining in the half. Three wides to the left. Now, let's see if Upshaw can make an impact here on this play. Alabama brings only three. Go deep. Intercepted. Pick. No. Oh, it's no, caught. It's, it's, Shepard. it's Shepard who got it. I'll tell you, Upshot almost got there, but just enough time, and Jefferson gets it off, and it complete bust in the secondary. I, I tell you, this has got to eat up. Upshot gets there so late that it looked like Russell Shepard was playing free safety on the play. Thirty four yards. The pitch. Four. Out of bounds. Uh, just inside the five. And the LSU Verizon Red Zone stats, 31 of 39 touchdowns. Remember, LSU gets the ball to start the second half. Late subs for both teams. Can still run any play with the timeout. Jefferson back. Hit as he lets it go, and Randall can't hang on deep in the end zone. Not very often you get an opportunity to double pump against the Alabama defense. He did, and Randall could have come up with that ball. You want to win a national championship and win it in Brian Denny Stadium, you need to come up with this catch. One pump. He could have had it. It would have been a great catch, but one he wanted, I'll bet, really badly. Third and goal. Shepard in motion. Corner blitz. Jefferson drills it. Oh, what a play. Flag is down. It might be on Ruben Randall on this one. I don't know what's going to happen. This was very physical. Let's Ray watch Patrick I'm, I'm, is the, the cornerback. No, it's, it, it looks like it's going to be on Kirkpatrick. It looked physical out of the corner of my eye, but Kirkpatrick was grabbing his jersey. Holding number 21 defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Remember, 15 seconds, one timeout. if you throw here and save the run for second down. If you run here and don't make it, you're committed to passing. They do that. They will throw it away. So you get an extra play when you call that strategy. Now on this down, you can throw or run. It gives you more options. 
Eight seconds left. One timeout. Ball of two. Les is down inside the five yard line talking to the official. Toss. Where? Caught short. Two seconds. And One. He, he did that burn to say, after this play, I'm calling a timeout. He did not want to have happened to him that happened at USC when they had a chance for a field goal. He went and alerted the official that he was going to do a timeout. This is a great goal line stand for Alabama. Great strategy by LSU, but the Bama defense would not be blocked. That was Hightower, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Geico halftime before coming up. In a couple of seconds, they've added one second to the clock. Back to our studios, Tim Spencer and Tony Barnhart. Gary, take us through the last sequence. Yeah. Really, uh, Les tipped it off here. He was telling the officials, hey, after this running play, I'm calling timeout. Look to me. They run the ball, and Les is running as fast as Spencer Wayne. Where? <laughs> where? He gets stopped. Watch Les. I'm going down the sideline, and he gets the call. And then they added a second, so a field goal attempt to tie things up coming from Drew Alamar. He's 10 of 12 for the year. Brad Wing is the holder. And Nick is going to ice him. Saban iced him. Time called Crimson Tide. Drew Alamon, sophomore, LSU, out of the hold of Brad Wing. Just remember, it is the Mad Hatter. I, I, just, side, okay? I was just thinking that. Would he dare have Wing get up? It is the Mad Hatter. 10 of 12. Not this time. Settle for the three. And take it all into the uh, halftime locker room. Uh, uh, these are two good defensive teams. Let's say that, okay? Three yeah. three. <laughs> Just about what we thought. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, oh, boy. And you know what else, Vern? Looks like it's Jordan Jefferson's game, doesn't it? It does to me, too, yes. Jarrett Lee throwing an interception only a second of the year, but... Uh, Threw it right in the belly of Robert Lester, and Jefferson went the distance after that. Let's go down to Tracy, who's with Nick Saban. Thanks, Vern. LSU went with a decision to go with Jordan Jefferson. How did your defense adjust to come up with that goal line stand? Well, we didn't do a very good job on the speed option, which we knew they were going to run. We just didn't play it right, so we got to do a better job on that. But did a nice job on the goal line here, you know, to get out of it. But. You know, Thanks a lot. Vern? Uh, sorry for the technical problems that we had. We missed the uh, last part of Nick Saban's comments to Tracy. End of the first half with our score 3 3. Let's go to Tim Brando in our New York studio. Okay, Vern. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Spencer, Tony, and I will have all of today's action, including by the end of the evening, will two of the BCS's top three fall from the ranks of the unbeaten? After this word from your local station. Brian Denny Stadium, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. We get set for the start of the third quarter, 3-3. Three, three. And moments ago, Tracy Wolfson with Les Miles. 
Coach, you made the decision to go with Jordan Jefferson. Why? Well, we got some perimeter run going. Felt like he was an advantage for us there. Um, no more than that. Will you stick with him the rest of the way? No, no, we'll go back and forth. We'll use both our quarterbacks. Trent Richardson, 114 total yards. How do you contain him in the second half? We're going to tackle better. We, get, we gave him a couple of uh, you know, pretty open spots. I mean, our defense did not man down in a couple areas. Well, we got to get that corrected. Thanks a lot, Vern. There is Jordan Jefferson came in. After Jared Lee threw the uh, interception, Jared Lee's second of the season and first since the uh, fourth quarter of Mississippi State. Alabama will kick off. Ron Brooks is the deep man now for LSU 3 3 as we get set for the start of quarter number three. And uh, we'll re tee the ball. it at the three goes right cut down as he gets to the 18 yard line and it'll be first down and 10 anything that uh, surprised you particularly in the first half I, I guess the missed assignments I mean Les was right when he talked to Tracy two busted assignments by LSU especially on Trent Richardson and the big pass down at the end of the half was a missed assignment by Alabama we'll show you that a little bit later because that was a completely a bone assignment so we are three three as we get underway in the third sweep left for not much well, the Russell Shepard play. He was yeah. backing up. I thought he was uh, playing I deep center field. I don't blame you. Here's the two receivers right here. And here's the three Alabama defenders. Now watch what happens. They go out. Now watch this. Freezer right there. Look at that. One, two, three on one guy. Nobody covers Shepard deep. No one on the field. That is about as bad as you can bust one. Now, they play combo all the time, does Alabama. They just reduce poorly on that one. Here's Jefferson, who is at quarterback to open the third quarter, and he throws it complete to Chase Clement, number 88. Normally used as a blocking tight end. Well, remember back to last year. They went with Jefferson in the second half. He completed two big passes early in that third quarter. Coming out from his own end zone and then the 75 yarder for a touchdown to Ruben Randall. Looks like they're going to let him throw again. Third and three. Shepard in motion. Jefferson puts it down. He'll run it. Nice little evasive maneuver and he's got a first down. Well, let's uh, let's revisit last year. Jefferson made some key throws. He found Terrence Tolliver early in the third quarter. Then he hooked up with Ruben Randall for a 75 yard touchdown in the third. And he also found Randall for a two point conversion. And all in all significant in that game last year 10 of 13 141. All right. Got the first down on the last here's a toss where. And uh, Gary, how about some halftime trip? I, I think LSU has done a nice job on Trent Richardson when he runs the ball. But look when they're throwing the ball to him. That has been bad so far. they got to find him. LSU, you see why the change was made. Lee, three for six, had that one bad interception. Jefferson has given him some width. And the field goal game missed all four all year. Three in this game. Michael Ford is the tailback. And Kenny Hilliard. Number 27 is in at fullback now as they operate out of the eye. Play action. Jefferson looks deep. He throws it and it's caught by D'Angelo Peterson. 
Well, you, you, little you, strength in your quarterback. Yeah, uh, Nick Gentry is saying, didn't I have him in the grasp there? I mean, I had him for a long time. Jefferson stays up and gets rid of the ball and saves. Makes a save for about 10 yard play here. Watch Gentry. He finds a way to get in there all the time. Actually, it was Upshaw also. Look at Upshaw yeah. on the ground making a play also. Loss of two, and it's third and nine. Clement sets up tight right. Shepard up on the line to the right side in the slot. Blitz. Jefferson took him down this time. Fourth down. Courtney Upshaw. Well, they were in man coverage. They were playing in and out on one side and three on two on the other side. Three on two over here, in and out on this side. LSU keeps their backs in. Nobody to throw to. Half coverage sack, half sack by Upshaw. That brings on Brad Wing. Marquise Mays, who has an 83-yard punt return for a touchdown this year, is back. The longest return. Oh, short punt. Really short punt. Tom Ritter says right there. He watches it from behind the punter. He angles it to the sideline and marks it. 22 yards on the punt. There's Ritter back there. He goes and gets at an angle of the ball, and he watches it cross the white line. Well, the Crimson Tide defense led by Courtney Upshaw and Dick Gentry goes three and out. And the Crimson Tide offense is on the field. The Jets meet the division leading Bills. Tim Tebow leads the Broncos into battle against Carson Palmer in his first start as a Raider. The NFL on CBS Sunday. 3-3 LSU in Alabama. And now Red Lobster presents... Tonight, scholar athlete from Alabama, it's Brad Smelly, major in management. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the University of Alabama's General Scholarship Fund. There is the H-back, first down 10 after that 22-yard punt by Brad Wing. Half is net average for the year right there, yep. just half. Richardson up the middle. You know, Alabama's possession chart for the first half would look like this. Well, you don't punt a lot when you miss field goals, do you? No, no. <laughs> I, I got to give a lot of credit to this LSU defense. They are taking on that powerful inside running game of Alabama. There was some thought that they might not be big enough to take them on inside. They are doing a great job. Second down and eight. A.J. McCarron comes back. He's got Marquise Mays over here, and the catch is made out of bounds. Third down. A play action pass. He had one foot out of bounds when he caught the ball. You know, I, I got to say, in this part of the game, the last three years, they would go to Julio Jones. They, they just need to find another receiver to make some plays. Who will it be? Mays, Hanks, Gibson. DeAndrew White, the freshman, is uh, on the field wide to the left side on third down. Here's McCarron. He goes for DeAndrew White, but this one is... Incomplete. Yeah. Claiborne knew he had help deep, so he really played strong man to man coverage. He's about as good as there is in college football, physical with the ball. Remember, you can chuck a guy downfield as long as the ball is not in the air. First punt for Alabama tonight. Now, we'd like to introduce you to Cody Mandel. There he is for the season. A 39 yard average. And uh, Odell Beckham is back to return this one. He waits. That was a big three and out for that LSU defense after that good field position Alabama had. 
Flag. Looks like we got a bad start over here from Drake Kirkpatrick. And, and you know, I think Tyron Matthew was Martin in his ear all, all, the all the time to him. Offense, five how he plays, remains, fourth down. you have to tune it out. If you got a guy that's talking to you, tune it out. Concentrate. Bottom of the screen right here. Well, Tyron Matthew, not the biggest of guys, listed at 5'9", 180. He went to two camps after his senior year in uh, New Orleans in high school, one in Tennessee and one here in Alabama. And instead he was offered by uh, Division I schools of lesser renown, let's put it that way, until LSU was convinced to give him a scholarship. And what dividends has that paid? This one's out of bounds after a 38-yard punt. Early third quarter. That man turned 60 last Monday. He's going to be 58 on November 10th. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by The Home Depot. Russell Athletic. Chick-fil-A. And by Coca-Cola Zero. 3-3, Alabama LSU. Ten minutes to go. It's time to uh, introduce ourselves to the Duck and the weekly ah. trivia question of the week. Who are the only two LSU head coaches to defeat Alabama four times? It's a pretty good one. Hmm? New quarterback is Jared Lee. So as Les Miles told Tracy, we will use both quarterbacks. His last pass was intercepted. Backs in the eye. Play action. He goes deep. His second pass is intercepted. Mark Barron flies down the sidelines, spins, and is taken down at the three. There is a flag on the play, though. Might have been on the return. You could see it. Jared, Jared Lee did not see this guy right here. Threw it right into coverage. Tight end, two guys right there. And you see Mark Barron knew he had help. And he just After sat on that route. Had the illegal block in the back. Number 99 of the return team. That's a 10 yard penalty. Alabama will keep the ball first down. That's a big penalty. That ball was inside the five yard line. You see it, Mark Barron knew he had help with Kirkpatrick. He knew he could sit on it to the inside. He makes the interception. And do we see anything here? 40, look at Hupshaw. I thought it was number 41 right there. Josh Chapman is called. There's there it one, is. but watch another one. Watch another one right here. We get another one. There could have been two of them on the play. Well, it takes it outside the 10 yard line and Jared Lee hoping for a continuation of what had been a stellar senior season back to back interceptions after having thrown only one all year. Here's McCarron. He's got time. He's going into double coverage deep. I'll tell you, Kenny Bell saved one there. Whoa. Uh tried to get the turnover big play and again that LSU defense bracketed Brandon Taylor Therald Simon and I tell you Kenny Bell did not cut it off and knock that down that ball would have been intercepted you know when you make a call of a big call like that as a coordinator Jim Mac McElwain you hope that it's not there that your quarterback can bail you out he just went for it didn't even see that it was double covered and now it's second down and 10 at the 35. Richardson. And uh, again contained. Yeah, ran right into the quarter blitz that time. Give it to John Chavis. He had it dialed perfectly on defense. We don't talk about John as much as Nick. It's just kind of the way it is sometimes. But John Chavis coming from the outside right here, you're going to see the corner coming into the screen. 
nowhere to go with the play, forced inside. Good defensive call. That's the way it went, and John had that one dialed up perfectly. That leaves uh, Alabama facing a third and nine. They thought after the interception they were going to have a first and goal, but instead the penalty put them all the way back at the 35 yard line. McCarron, he's got Marquise Mays over here, finds him, and Mays is going to be short. Well, here we go again. Yep. Now let's give it to this secondary. That's another stop for this LSU defense. Remember after the bad punt, they produced a three and out. This time they forced the ball underneath, and now they got, what, 47-yard field goal approximately? Yeah, so they bring Cade Foster on. It's fourth and four. Marquise Mays limping. He's back on the bench. And here is Foster from 46. He's had a tough night. McCarron will hold. This one's got the distance. Knocks it home. Breaks the tie. It brings a smile. And it was the interception off the arm of Jarrett Lee that set up the 46-yard field goal. Mark Barron had the interception. Jarrett Lee, back-to-back -back interceptions. And it's 6-3. Knew we had it all along. Seven fifty-six to go, third quarter. Alabama, forty-six-yard field goal, and it was set up because Jared Lee had his second interception. He's had a tough day. This was his first interception since Game Three of the season, and then on the next time he took the field on offense, Mark Barron picked it off. And so for the redshirt senior from Brenham, Texas, who has had a really terrifically solid year, not so tonight. Now you wonder what Les is going to do. Les makes tough decisions, and he's not afraid to make tough decisions. Will he go back to Jarrett Lee one more time, or will he just stick with Jordan Jefferson the rest of the game? Want to guess or wait? Well, I think I, I think he's going to need both quarterbacks. I really do. As we look at Mays, he got nicked on that last one, and I, I'd be surprised if he goes back to Jarrett Lee on this series. But. He's the Mad Hatter. Here's Foster. Very short kickoff. Taken by Ron Brooks at the 17-yard line. And Brooks fights his way beyond the 30. And uh, it'll be first down and 10 LSU. Let's go to Tim Brando. This Heisman watch presented by Nissan. Burn Andrew Luck shook off the rain and the chill to throw for 206 and three touchdowns in number four Stanford's 38-13 win at Oregon State. Russell Wilson threw for two touchdowns, ran one in for another, and uh, Wisconsin got the job done. Kellen Moore is on display tonight for the uh, Boise State Broncos over on the CBS Sports Network. I think he'd fare pretty well in the SEC. Kellen Moore, back to you. You bet. Jefferson is the call at quarterback on first down. He weaves his way up to the 38 yard line. Well, how have Jefferson and Lee compared tonight? Number of snaps 24 to 11. Modest passing numbers, but the big one is lower right. Yeah, and, and, and Jordan gives them a lot more ways to spread this Alabama defense out. First time either team has trailed in the second half this year, LSU. Michael Ford carries it, and he might have, he will have enough for the first down and 10. Runs into Dante Hightower, number 30. Again, the way to run the ball with belief that those guys up front are going to block him, you trust it's going to be there, and you make, you get what the play has blocked. Well, as a team, LSU is now rushed for 83 yards in this ball game. On the season, Alabama number one in the country against the rush, averaging 1.7 yards per carry. 
against them. 1.7. Here's Jefferson. Randall. He, he has been the quiet star in this game. Remember, he's leading the SEC in yards per catch. 19 yards. He's had one catch in the game so far. This is the kind of talent he has. Catch a short pass, make a first down. Across midfield to the 45. High formation again, two wides to the right side. Cross, Ford. Two blockers out there to help get him around the corner. And he is knocked down as he nears the sideline inside the 40. You can see what Stradrawa and Steve Craigthorpe are trying to get in this game plan. Make Alabama run sideline to sideline in the run game. Second down and three. Randall and Beckham split to the left. Ford bounces inside the 35. Now LSU, until a few moments ago, had trailed for only six minutes. That was against Oregon. They trailed twice in that game. The last 13 to 9 for five minutes before they scored at the half. And now they find themselves down on the road against the number two team in the country. First down and 10. Well, Alabama is misaligned. See if they get it straight. They're not right. I... Flag down. Prior to the snap, all start, 60. Offense, five yard penalty, first down. Will Blackwell. And let's check in with Tracy Wolfson. Well, guys, we saw wide receiver Marquise Mays come off. It's a right ankle injury. They taped it heavily, put his shoe back on. He is limping on the sideline, trying to run it off. It looks like he's going to try and go back in, but guys, he is in a lot of pain down here. Thank you, Trace. After the penalty, first down, 15. 6-3, Crimson Tide. Jefferson tucks it, goes right. I think you went the wrong way. Do you? Yep. Dre Kirkpatrick makes the tackle. Well, number one against number two. Two of the better defensive teams in the country, and we have seen why through the first half and almost eight minutes, ten minutes of the uh, third quarter. Six to three, Alabama. We were tied at three at the break. And then Cade Foster's 46 yard field goal off of an interception of a pass by Jarrett Lee has been the difference in the score. There's the late toss, and Ford is racked up. What did Nick tell Tracy? We've got to straighten out our rules on the speed option. I think Dante Hightower's got a feel for the rules on this one. Ask Jordan Jefferson. Number 30, right there, watch him. I got the quarterback, and he does. Forces an early pitch, and then it's played well on the perimeter. Nice tackle out there by Menzi. Third and 14. Where's Upshaw? Is he gonna make a play? He's right there. Roll right. Pressure. Heave it. Incomplete. Damian Square had the pressure on Jordan Jefferson. Fourth down. You could tell LSU in that situation did not trust the pass protection. They rolled out and wanted to avoid the sack on that situation. Brad Wing is on to punt. He's already got two inside the, what, five-yard line yes. in this game? Mm -hmm. He does that new style. He kicks it end over end that allows that ball to stop. And Marquise Mo, uh, Mays is injured and on the sideline. Usually 
the punt return specialist for Alabama. So Christian Jones is on there now. Here's Wing. End over end. Fair catch. Ball four and taken at the 10. Twenty seven yard punt for wing six three Alabama. Following our post game show on CBS Gary Danielson discusses this game and he'll answer your questions live from the SEC on CBS Cruiser. Watch the fifth quarter at CBS Sports dot com slash Gary. Yeah, this should be fun tonight. No more two passionate fan bases than LSU and oh. Alabama. Oh, uh -huh. my goodness. Yep. And uh, then maybe you and David Moulton can discuss the Aflac <laughs> answer. <laughs> Who are the only two LSU head coaches to defeat Alabama four times? Here you go. <laughs> Nick Saban and Les Miles. Nick, of course, was the head coach there earlier in the decade. Well, Alabama has started drives, among other drives tonight, at the four, the five, and now the ten. Play action, the carrot. Left side. Oh, he's got Hanks open. Yes, he did. Tyron Matthew beaten on the play. Remember how against Tennessee, Alabama struggled in the first half, and he came out with McCarron throwing five straight passes to open it up. Well, here, one on one, Hanks against Matthew. He's decided after two three and outs on the two first drives of the game of this half, he opened it up with a first down pass. And Marquise Mays remains on the bench. The other first down pass, remember, he went for it all too much, too greedy. A little bit of a draw play. How about that? Barkevius Mingo and Richardson has been wrapped up on his last six carries. Well, McCarron in the second, they were tied 6-6 here against Tennessee in their last outing, and then McCarron really, uh, really came alive in the second half yeah, they of that called game. To him. I think they needed to get his confidence up for this game, and he was ready. You know, Trent Richardson, you got to give this LSU defense credit. I think his last six attempts, he's got less than five yards. I mean, they are stoning Trent Richardson. And Eddie Lacy is on in his place. Here's McCarron out of Mobile, Alabama. Whoops. That should cost him five. Those are tough oh, yards. Oh, they get timeout? I saw the flag go in the air. The only one that could have saved it was Saban on the sideline. Prior to the delay of game penalty, we had a timeout called by Alabama. That is their first charge timeout. And so they did get it called in time. 156 to go in the third. Coming this December, Showtime will take you behind the scenes of Army and Navy football with a new documentary, A Game of Honor. Get the first look with exclusive online episodes at cbsports.com slash honor. This is the most American game played. When we graduate, we'll be on the same team, but when we're on that field, we do not like each other. They're there for a special reason. It's not just about the football. That's a game of honor this December only on Showtime. Back to play here in Brian Denny in Tuscaloosa. The top two teams in the country. First time since 06 that we've had a meeting of one and two in regular season. And it's a 6-3 game, second down and 10. Here comes a little blitz, jump pass, oh, incomplete. Intended for DeAndrew White, number two. And Mays remains out of the game. Yep, so does Trent Richardson. That was uh, Lacey in there to pick up that blitz. And uh, A.J. McCarron did not set his feet. You know, that front seven for LSU is right now dominating the football game. Alabama cannot run the ball. They're doing a decent job pass blocking, but they can't run the football right now. Third down and 10. From 
stuck defensive line swing pass out of the backfield it's Eddie Lacy that's gonna be close I think he got it I think so too this has got to be disappointing if you're LSU third and long allow him to dump the pass off this wasn't a screen this was just a dump off and you can see right there Carnell Hatcher slipped and that's why the first down was successfully negotiated boy it's nice to dump the ball off and get a first down Richardson stays on the bench held in check here in the uh, in the second half and what he's got three total yards in the second half 14 carries 56 yards in all play action the Karen and the rush Behind him. intercepted picked off by Morris Claiborne to the 20 down to the 15 first Alabama turnover tonight and AJ McCarron throws the pick that's a great matchup and McCarron should have known. Watch Claiborne follow the motion. He knew he had a bad matchup here. A corner on an H-back. Now watch this. Claiborne has a slower man. Goes to him, bad throw. Behind him, two things on that. You got a corner on an H-back and a poor throw. LSU takes over at the 15-yard line. It's Jefferson as quarterback. Spencer Ware is the deep back in the eye, and he will get the handoff. Goes right. T-Bob Bear trying to help him and uh, misfired on the block of Jesse Williams, the Bert, young man from Australia. I've got more bad news for Alabama fans. On that interception, Barrett Jones left the field. He's in the locker room. He was limping off. Their best All-American, their best lineman and All-American lineman. Second down and 10. Quarterback draw, Jefferson. Got him. And Josh Chapman did a great job there. Pushed the pocket, then sealed off the run. Big Josh Chapman, nose tackle. Not a great pass rusher, but point of attack. Watch him push back Bear. Push him, push him, and then make the play. That is A.J. McCarron. His fourth pass interception of, of the year. He threw two in the first game. One against Tennessee, and now one in the third quarter against LSU. That's the end of three with our score, 6-3. We'll return to Bryant-Denny Stadium right after this word. From your local station. LSU, as you have seen again tonight, one of the better defensive units in the country. And a big play just supplied by Morris Claiborne. Chosen <laughs> right behind Michael Burnett. Yeah, right behind him. <laughs> well, Alabama's got to get a stop here. LSU did it. Let's see if they can. Third and 11, Jefferson. They do. Yep. Damian Square. Alabama decides to play coverage. Watch the disciplined zone. Two safeties. In and out over here. Nobody to throw to on Randall. Good coverage. Nobody open. I think it was Mosley that got a piece of him. That brings on number 30 for a 30-yard effort to tie it up. Brad Wing will hold. Joey Crapel is the snapper. And you can tell by the silence of the Alabama student section that that one was true. Opening moments, quarter number four. LSU and Alabama tied at six. And now it's time for our GEICO game recap. 
Well, it was touted as the game of the century or the biggest game ever. And it became a uh, field goal fest thus far. If you are a fan of field goals missed or made, you come to the right store. That one missed. Finally, Shelley, first points of the night for Alabama. Alemon. Tied it up 3-3. We were at 3-3 at the half. Oh, there's more. Shelly, 46 yards. Alemon, and this one just tied it. 30-yard field goal, and the score is 6-6. Opening moments, fourth quarter. Barrett Jones, good news, Gary, yes. for Alabama fans. Yeah, they got to have him. And uh, Tracy Wilson has more on Barrett Jones. That's right, guys. They took him into the locker room for a leg injury just for further evaluation, but they did tell me he was going to return. And as you see, he's back on the sideline. On the other side of the ball, LSU offensive lineman Josh Williford was also taken into the locker room. A shoulder contusion. They added some padding. They expect him to return as well. All right, Tracy, thank you. Alamon will kick off for the Tigers of LSU. Richardson chases this one back and he decides to bring it out. Bounces off that tackle. Well, he did get it back. Out to the 23 yard line. 6-6. Six, six. I, I remember a year ago asking you, what do you think? We're just starting, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what I said. And you know, it's been the team that's leading going into the fourth quarter. Four years in a row has lost the lead only once. Alabama in overtime have they even won the game. So, you know, who had the lead? Alabama, field goal 6-6. Six, six. We're going to see a lot. And it's been turnovers late that have right. really played a part of this game. So we are back to play now. Alabama with the ball at their own 23. Karen into the flat Richardson this time he was well covered John Hancock, John. and let's go back to New York for this John Hancock update here's Tim Brendo I got another turnover for you Vern this one created by Arkansas's defense watch Jake Beck at 91 hit Connor Shaw the Kenta Jones would recover at the one then Broderick Green would take it in Arkansas beats South Carolina 44 28 and that means gentlemen Georgia controls destiny indeed it does and we are back so the updated SEC East standings Georgia five and one they were out of conference today and they are at home against Auburn significant game South Carolina five and two and Florida with a with a win today over Vandy and Boise State having a parade because if Georgia gets in there they're going to have an argument right might oh. not win it they yeah I win it but they're going to have an argument third down six the Karen Marquise Mays Back in the game with a huge catch all the way out to the 45. That's a gain of 18. Well, LSU should know this pass. They lived with it for three years. This pass by Gary Croton when he was their coordinator, the wide receiver jailbreak screen. And Mike Mays catches it and shows why he's nifty. How about that? They get Mays and Barrett Jones back on the field. And a huge first down conversion. 6-6 ball game, 12-24 to go. Mays to the right side. McCarron to Richardson. He has been bottled up. Sure has. You know, one of the things that John Chavis said to us on the phone, I go, Coach, you're going to really miss Drake Nevis, aren't you? He had a great game last year. He goes, well, yes, Drake's a great player. But I got to tell you, I like my guys. I like Brockers. I like Logan. I think we're better than we were last year. Which surprised me. Yeah, me too. Oh. Second down. Hundred and fourteen total yards in the first half, ten in the second. Fake the reverse, give it to Richardson. 
Breaks a tackle. Well, oh my goodness. There you go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't need to say anything on this one. Nah. Watch him run. He ran right through Sam Montgomery. Eric Reed doesn't bring him down. And Josh Downs is down for LSU. Another look at this as Montgomery misses that one. Matt Montgomery, like his 260 defensive end, running right through him, Richardson is. Another defensive lineman misses him. So Josh Downs number 77 is on the ground 24 yard run for Trent Richardson time has been called. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by the Droid Razor. Autotrader.com. Aflac. And by Bud Light. 6-6 ball game and while we were away Josh Downs did walk off the field unaided. Well how about turnovers Gary that have played so significant. Yeah last it's four been years. the story the pressure ratchets up. Remember Chad Jones right here gets the one at Alabama Richard Johnson in overtime the fourth interception of the game the one that wasn't called by Patrick Peterson and then last year Drake Nevis forces the fumble late in the game. Remember, Alabama still had time to mount a drive there. And we are in the fourth quarter here, tied 6-6. First down and 10 after that 24-yard. Here's a Wildcat, huh? Hey, Jim McCarron, way down here. Yep. He can throw. Hayes puts it up. Has to wait on it. Got it. Michael Williams. And Mike, which way? Which way? Intercepted. Oh no! Eric Reed, I thought sure that Williams had it. How about that? Michael Williams was wide open, but Reed chased him down. The ball was thrown a little late. Here's Williams. Watch him go. Watch how open he is. And then Reed catches him. I'll tell you, that's so interesting. Reed was brought over on the play by Gibson. He would not even have been there had Gibson not been running around. Here we go. What happens? Oh, first down. Boy, I'll tell you. They might want to look at this again. Does Williams have the ball? It's in his hands. He goes down. When does Reed get it? That's going to be reviewed. And the call on the field was interception. Now, what we think here is maybe Williams was still bobbling it. Yeah, I think Reed's going to end up with that ball. Ben Oldham is our replay official. The call, Eric Reed with the interception as they battled on the way down. Yeah, I, I think that one's going to stand. Let's watch it again. Watch how Eric Reed even got in the play. He's covering number 11. Here's Reed over here. Watch when Gibson goes across. That takes him in the play. A little unintended consequences here. Then he sees Williams wide open and just makes an athletic play to get back there. That's an aware football player right there. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Interception, first down. Fourth quarter turnovers. If that ball's out there another foot or two, Reed has no chance. Yeah. And so McCarron was at wide out, and Mays threw it, and it was intercepted. Eric Reed. How about that play? What a heads up play for Eric Reed. Comes off his man just being an athlete. On first down, this will be Jefferson for a couple of yards. 
You know, Vern, that's some of the things that the coaches, you know, try to tell players. I can put you into positions, but you have to be aware. You have to see what's going on. Go make a play sometimes. I can't coach everything. And Eric Reed, just by being aware, might have saved this game for LSU. Still plenty of time, though. Chats with Ron Brooks on the LSU sidelines. Second down and eight. Hilliard and Ford are the backs. They give it to Hilliard, and he is spilled. It'll be third and long. All right, now do you let Jordan Jefferson throw the ball from out of this position? Remember last year, he and Tolliver out from about this position right here, but it was a first down call. This will be a third down call against the nickel package. Third and six at the five. Yeah, Marquise, Marquise Mays right there had him. The gimmick play that McElwain and Saban were waiting all game for. What will Les call here? Randall starts in motion. They keep it on the ground, hand it to Ford, and it'll be fourth down. I think Les Miles said the way we're playing defense, let's just live for another day. Punt the ball here and take our chances on defense. We don't want to make a critical mistake on our own goal line and give this game away. I agree with them. Well, they're going to bring Marquise Mays hobbled with that bad ankle and with the memory of an interception he just threw. Now, the longest punt return allowed by LSU this year is seven yards. He got this one. Though. This one. Look at oh, this. It's over his head. Oh, well, see, now Mays' ankle hurt him on this play. You've got to catch that ball. It cost his team 30 yards. How about that punt for wing? See, his ankle couldn't move. Yep. 72-yard punt. Brad Wing. Back in Tuscaloosa, don't forget the play of the game coming up, presented by Napa Auto Parts. That could be a TBD to be determined right now. And the poll results, we invited you to uh, vote on which team will go undefeated. No, 30% Alabama. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Boise. What am I thinking here? I, I, I thought it was harder. I think it's a harder bet on the first two. I think Boise is the sure thing here, don't you? Mm-hmm. Right. Boy, I, you really got to wonder. I mean, Les won that match of wits with Nick Saban. He said, I'll punt it and take another chance. Nick put Mays out there. That turned out to be a mistake. He was too injured to make that play. Fourth time tonight, Alabama has begun a possession inside its own 20. McCarron, handoff Richardson. And you had to figure Alabama thought they'd get the ball about the 50, 40 yard line. Right. What a difference. Remember early in the game, Alabama was running left. I got to figure that Jones is playing, but he's injured because they're running right now. He's out there hobbling. He's doing it on one leg. DJ Fluker, number 76. Michael Williams were the two on the right side. There is Barrett Jones. And uh, as they stretch the chain, we are told they come up uh, just short. McCarron. Turnovers now are two and two in this game. Here's Barrett Jones. Graduated with a 4.0 GPA. Uh, we told you his story in previous games. He's a remarkable young man. And uh, has been to Haiti a couple of times and of course was very involved in the tornado relief efforts here. Remember it was his injury against Auburn when he wasn't in that game was a big part of that loss to Auburn last year. Mm -hmm. Very valuable football player. He's playing on one leg tonight though. LSU should play very safe here. Give a first down no big play. They are two safeties deep. And Richardson gets it to the 30 yard line. Once again, let's go back to New York and check in with Tim Brando.
Rick Neuheisel's job many thought was on the line. Well, look at this. Derek Coleman rushes in from one yard out. It's 29-28 UCLA. Then Arizona State's Alex Garut misses what would have been a game-winning field goal from 46 yards. At 5-4, and four, they control their destiny in the Pac-12 South. Vern, Gary, back to you. Hmm. How about Rick? That is yep. home him out of there. Yes, indeed. Marquise Mays in motion back across to the right side. McCarron rolls out, finds Marquise Mays, and he scoots out of bounds up near the 39 yard line. Yeah, going straight ahead, it doesn't seem to be bothering him, but on that punt, it was. Nice call on this one. First down play. They're mixing it up. They respect the LSU defense. They're continuing to try to stay balanced. Alabama in the last three years in this game, 139 runs, 139 passes. How about that? Exact balance in this series. Now the receivers bunched up to the near side of the Andrew White is out the uh, top of the field, but they'll give it to uh, Trent Richardson. He runs into Kevin Minter. And Richardson now 20 carries for 98 yards. He had a string, did Trent Richardson, of uh, six 100 yard games in succession, and then was held below that mark 77 yards in the last outing against Tennessee, but very close to going over 100 again tonight. Right. As an anomaly, his low for the year was in the season opener. He was held to 37 yards on 13 carries by Kent State. First down and 10. Oh, they got him this time. Brandon Taylor, number 18. Boy, you talk about being ready for this play. This had to be a scouting report because Taylor feel, felt it. He got inside the crack that time and made the play. That's something that you're in film study. When you see that guy coming in motion, you say, hit it full speed, and he did. Minus six, and the clock. Yeah, yeah, any mistake now could be fatal. At 6.30 and running. Ron Richardson, they got him again. Ron Brooks this time. Remember, Brooks was the star of the game when Matthew was suspended. He lines up in that spot in their odd defense right there, and he blitzes, makes the play. I tell you, that thing wasn't going anywhere anyway. No one blocked up front. That offensive line, Alabama are making some run plays, but LSU is standing there. It is a physical football game here. And now it's third and 20 after losses on the last two. Darius Hanks comes in motion near side. McCarron has it. Blitz from the corner. It's Brooks. They've got the little screen set. That's Trent Richardson. Pretty close. Yeah, he had a long, long way to travel. He gained 18. They're going to let him come this time. Dump it off. Alabama has always been a good screen team. But this would be a too big of a gamble. You got to punt the ball. Cody Mandel will punt it. Odell Beckham, number 33, is back to return it. Only the second punt tonight, and it comes with less than five minutes remaining. Beckham at the nine. Flag is down. And a player is down as well. That's Kirkpatrick, number 21. Looked like Matthew might have gotten him. Those two have been talking and competing. And Beckham says, why? Why, Tyron? Trying to do too much on this play, and it's going to cost four. Poor field position again for LSU. Right there, he got him with one of the forearm right across. Totally unnecessary. Watch him grab him. That's, that's just 
a selfish penalty right there. And Kirkpatrick still down. During the kick, holding number seven on the return team. That penalty will be assessed half the distance to the goal from the end of the kick. First down, LSU keeps the ball. Yep, Nick saw too, as well as a hundred thousand other people here. Mm -hmm. Four thirty-three to go. Time has been called. Well, they tend to Drake Kirkpatrick. Gary, another look. Uh, yeah, here's the action right over here. Watch his right arm. Just an incredible mistake by Matthew. Now, this ball was out to the 35. It's going to be at the 5. I think Beckham said, I could have beat that first guy myself. Why did you do that? Well, that's a reaction as Drake Kirkpatrick walked off. And then... Uh, Tyron Matthew, a little more hostile reaction as he went over and took a seat on the bench. I recall last year when Jordan Jefferson threw his way out of this position right here on first down. They threw a pass to Tolliver, right? Yes. Okay, it was exactly this type of situation on the five yard line. Will they try to run it out or throw it out? They'll throw it out, and yes, they, they find will. Chase Clamont. you got to give the other team credit. They're a good team, too. Even though you like to run the ball, you've got to say, give them respect. Let's do a nice short route to our big tight end and move the chains. Second catch for Clamont. That's only his fifth for the year. Much more acknowledged as a blocking tight end. Now they'll run it with Ware, but not very far. It's really, really nice to watch good defense. Forcing it to bounce out, running it down, staying in your lanes, knowing each gap has to be played. D. Milner is the fellow who missed the tackle. Now second down and nine. And when he's playing for Kirkpatrick, that's where Kirkpatrick would have been. Out of the spread on second down. 3.20 to go. Tied at six. Jefferson. Hit from behind by Hightower. One of the scariest things to play man coverage against a running quarterback is all your linebackers have turned their back to him. And if he does scramble, he's got a lot of places to go. Watch these guys turn their backs. They're looking up. They've got their back to the backfield. Look at that. And when they get to scramble, no one to stop him. That was an 18-yard gain for Jefferson. He's got 43 in the ball game. Beckham and Randall near side. They'll test the middle again. That's Spencer Ware who's been held in check much of the night. Yeah, but that's a pretty successful run right there. Tough run. That's all you're going to get. You get four yards. That's a success on first down. Here's a hurry up. LSU has all three of its timeouts left. On second down. It'll be third down. That was Ware again. And Nick Gentry, number 58. And let's get an update on Drake Patrick. Here's Trace. Well, guys, as we saw, it was a right shoulder injury, but he's also extremely dizzy. They've taken him into the locker room and rolled him out for the rest of this game. Wow. My goodness. It looked like a right forearm. It's like something you'd see in 1960 football. Third and two.
Kirby Smart wants the defense to check out of their play. Where? There. No! He stopped it. Was that Mark Barron? I don't know who it was, but they got in there fast. It was Barron. And Upshaw. And Upshaw. How about that? Barron, the safety. We haven't said much about him all, all game. He's right here. Watch him hit the play. Backside makes the play. Look at that play by Barron. Hmm. And Brad Wing is on to punt. This time it will not be Marquise Mays. Remember with the bad ankle he allowed the last punt to go over his head. Yeah, he's got defense safe out there too. He's looking for the fake. Christian Jones, number 22. They forced the punt. Fair catch at the 20. Woo! <laughs> Very expressive of you. <laughs> Stay tuned for the Jeep post game show on CBS Sports. I'd say something along the lines of 52 well, seconds. I, I was a little surprised Nick didn't use a timeout there, to be honest. It cost him 40 seconds with 52 seconds left in the game. Now remember, Les has all three timeouts. So a three and out and three timeouts means they'll get the ball back one more time. McCarron, Richardson, first down and 10 at the 20. Mays coming left, stiff arm, double teamed and driven uh, down at the 22 yard line. Brandon Taylor led the way. Tried to get the ball to the same outside jailbreak screen. Yes. 25 seconds to go. Les decided not to use a timeout there. Yep. Now he'll get one. Oh, he's going to let it go to overtime. How about that? Overtime? for a possible berth in the national championship. And Barrett Jones is hurt. He's been a warrior tonight playing in this game on one leg. Who had 6-6 six, six as a final in regulation in this one? My gracious. We'll return to Tuscaloosa after these words. That's a gorgeous view of Bryant Denny Stadium from overhead and you'll notice that there are no <laughs> seats that have been <laughs> emptied out. Overtime rules of all starts at the opponent's 25 yard line. You keep possession until scoring or failing to make a first down. Teams must have an equal number of possessions. And now the uh, very significant point toss. Tom Ritter is our referee. Last minute piece of instruction for Jordan Jefferson away from the huddle. Right, gentlemen, we are about to enter the overtime period. Each team will get an opportunity to score from the 25 yard line. There'll be one timeout per team. The winner of the toss gets their choice in the odd period, the loser of the toss gets their choice in the even periods. The choices are offense, defense, or end of the field. Is everybody clear on the rules? Okay. LSU, you're the visiting captain. Same coin as we used at the toss. You got a head, you got an eagle as a tail. What is your call? Tails. 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 Call is tails. It is tails. Defense. Which end of the field? You're going to be and Alabama wants to go to the end of the field where their fan base are, where the students are. They're going to play it into their students. Defense. The noisy end of the Alabama field. Alabama will have the ball first and 10 at the 25. No surprise there. Well, it's 6 6 as we go to overtime, and the difference in this game take you back. Kate Foster missed wide right. 
called upon again. This time it was wide right and short. And this one was blocked and picked off by Eric Reed. They have made two. But what a game for Eric Reed. Gary. This interception is the other difference in the game. That could have been a touchdown for Alabama at least. First and goal from the one yard line. A, as terrific as a heads up play as I've seen in a long time. Well, the overtime records LSU 7 and 5, and Alabama 4 and 7. And let's all recall back to 2008, 21 21. Remember, Alabama intercepted Jarrett Lee on first down when he did that and end that game, 2008. Marquise Mays leads the Crimson Tide offense onto the field. Barrett Jones limping will line up at left tackle. This is the formation that LSU never found Richardson. Remember, he's in the slot here early in the game. Now in motion. On first down, snap back. McCarron underneath, incomplete. A.J. McCarron, redshirt sophomore, won the battle, as we said. Uh, really won the job on the road at Penn State. In the opener against Kent State, not all that effective. Had that uh, fight with Philip Sims for the starting spot, but he played so well on the road, and he's been the starter ever since. And now... That's going to be a penalty. 12 men in the huddle. Oy. Hanks was the last one off. And remember, the field goal has, as you just showed, substitution infraction on the offense, breaking the huddle with 12 players. That's a five yard penalty. It's full second down. Hanks was not supposed to be out there when he runs off. That's a penalty. Oy. Now, Lakeman is defensive substitutions for LSU. They bring three new bodies on. Yeah, they bring Four, their five. Odd, yeah. They bring their odd front out with Brooks. Remember off the edge? They feel they can blitz from this odd front. Second down and 15. And they do. McCarron, deep for Richardson. Over his head and incomplete. He had him, didn't he? Yes, he did. Would have taken a great throw. A matchup against Baker. He's going to just wheel it out of the outside. Not a good throw. A lot of space there. If he puts it inside the field, Richardson would catch that. Mm. Remember John Parker Wilson threw that one to Julio Jones down the left sideline? Just as tight a coverage. Mays, top of the screen. It's third down and 15. I wonder if they run it to try to get a field goal here. Can't get sacked. Oh, Can't get sacked. Boy. I thought they would try to run the ball to try to get a field goal position. It was a 47-yard field goal before the snap. And a 53 or 52 yard field goal after the snap. It's 52. He's missed twice this season from 53. McCarron will hold it. Cade Foster will attempt it. He does have one from 46 tonight. No. And now LSU gets the ball. A sack really put this thing out of, out of position. There was no way. He had no confidence. He did not hit it well. That's why I thought on third down we would get a run. Now remember, LSU loves their kicker. They're going to be conservative here, aren't they? You would think. And don't discount the impact of that illegal substitution. Oh, yeah. Five-yard penalty there. Good All point, right. Vern. From the 25. And what did Nick tell us? No mental mistakes. They had a huge one right there. Jefferson sends Shepard in motion. There's the first conservative call. Spencer Ware 
And he picks up three down to the 22 yard line. Dante Hightower, what's at stake? The lead in the SEC West, and quite possibly, if you win the SEC championship. How about this, Vern? The last three losses that Alabama had last year were all teams that threw the ball 20 times. LSU tonight has thrown the ball 17 times. That has been the formula. Second down. Option. Oh, he just did get rid of it. Ford down the sidelines. They call. They stepped out. They out called of him out. They out of bounds. Out. That was no touchdown call. They called him out on the seven-yard line. Yes. Here's Ford. Here you are. See it right here. Look at that. Oh, the official looking right at it, right on the line. Good call. There's the official That's eyeballing it from line. behind, eyeballing it. And another look at the left foot. And a really fine piece of officiating. He was out of bounds at the seven. You have to believe, don't you, that Alabama thought it was going to be another run up the middle? They went with the option, a good pitch, a good block. And I thought he was going to score. Would you think about kicking it right now? Got a good kicker. I wouldn't want to fumble the ball. <laughs> you win this game 9-6. You got inside track to the national championship. There's Drew Alemon getting a full season as the place kicker after John Jasper had graduated and sent all kinds of LSU records. Meanwhile, Alabama. Well, snap, bobbled, and didn't even come close. Yep. Uh, Carson Tinker with a bad snap, and it was uh, way short. A Alabama will rue this in overtime. Remember on first down, drop on the screen. Yep. Second, penalty. Third down, incomplete. And then on second down after the penalty, incomplete. And on third down, a sack. I think one more to the middle of the field, and out comes the kicker. Ford is the running back. Hilliard is the fullback. Jefferson is the quarterback, and they give it to Hilliard. Nothing. Second down and goal. Looking at uh, the LSU bench to see if there's any indication he's going to send the field goal unit on. Not yet. Foster missed from 52 after the low snap. Aren't things different? We got a true freshman in the game right there. Killing on that play. Yeah. Yes. How about that? Drew Alamon from Lafayette, Louisiana. Still think they're going to center the ball in the middle. Here's where. Yes. Here comes the field goal yeah. team. The reason you kick on third down now is if you drop the snap, you got a chance on fourth down. A senior Joey Crapel, number 50, is the snapper. Brad Wing, the punter from Australia, is the holder. And Drew Alimo, number 30. And this is for the win. 25 yards for victory. Timeout, Alabama. That is their one and only timeout of this overtime period. This will be a 30-second timeout. Now, Alamon manages a smile as he heads over. I think Alabama fans right now are looking for Terrence Cody for <laughs> one saving block. 
Remember against Tennessee when he saved that one? That was the last time that Alabama did not score 20 points in yep. the game, as a matter of fact. They beat Tennessee as uh, Mount Cody had two blocks in that game, 12 10. Well, you see anguish on the faces of these Alabama fans now. Again, it's going to be Cropel wing and the kicker drew Alamo. LSU remains undefeated. That is close. My oh my. is with Les Miles. <laughs> That's right, a wet Les Miles. Coach, it lived up to the hype. It was a grinder. How did you guys pull it off in their house? I, uh, our team's got real character, and they, they want to compete. They, you know, they were going to overcome any way. They came in here with that attitude. Congratulations to Alabama. What a great game they played. What a tremendously talented team they have, and Coach Saban's doing a great job there as well. This gives your team an edge, but you still have a lot of football left to play. So how can you use this confidence down the stretch? This one was not the biggest game in the history of the world. Just so you know, these next games, those games are much more important. People are going to start talking a rematch if everything plays out. Are you in favor? I would, be, I would be honored to face that team again. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. Vern? I am so glad that Les Miles said <laughs> <Okay>. straight. <laughs> straight answers, right? There's the uh, play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. They set it up perfectly. And Drew Alemon drilled it home right through the heart. And a shower for Les Miles. Nine. So, oh, that was cold. <laughs> Sam Montgomery. You bet. Nick Saban. Not tonight. This is the first time since Steve Spurrier and Florida beat Saban in back to back years that a coach has defeated him in the rematch game. One more time, the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. This one went about it down the middle as it could go, didn't it? Yes. I'll still say for me the play of the game was by Eric Reed saving that touchdown or a one-yard line play. I thought it was as good a play as I've seen this season. Alemon gets the field goal. And LSU will celebrate long into the night. Richardson held in check tonight, 89 yards for Gary Danielson and Tracy Wilson. I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long from Tuscaloosa, where the final score in overtime, LSU 9, Alabama 6. Up next, the Jeep Post Game Show. After these messages and a word from your local station.